Hey everyone, this is Guy, and in this video I'm showing you how I model some regions around the Pacific Northwest. Now, this video took a bit longer than I'm used to uh, putting videos out, but that's because the camera, I had problems, and I also had shingles. But through all of that, I still finished this video just like I said I would. So let's jump into the materials right now. So to start off, you need foam board insulation. Uh, these are just scrap pieces, but we'll use big pieces, a two by two, I think. And then plaster Paris. This is for all of our cliffs and everything like that. And all-purpose glue, Elmer's, you know, to the rescue, it's the best stuff ever. Also, uh, I'm using a foam board adhesive to actually adhere the stuff to the, the base this time. And the base that we're using is a 2x2 two two particle board. It's only like about, I think, one inch or half an inch thick. Now, we're going with our usual toilet paper or paper towels, whichever one you want to do. This is what I do. I use toilet paper. It's two-ply. And brushes and carving tools. These carving tools are actually for wood, but I found they work really, really good for plaster. And I use an assorted assortment of paints, but this one is burnt umber. I use it for all my ground. And then all your scenery material. I don't have a big mix, so I'm using like a green blended turf and then like a fall colored type of thing for like dead foliage. And you're going to want your scenic materials right so I have a mixture of different colored bushes the trees I made these deciduous trees I don't know if we're going to use them but I just wanted to show them anyway and if you want to see how we made these trees that's in another previous video and also little rocks that I sifted from you know concrete sand we're going to start this by obviously putting the glue on the baseboard right because we want an actual foam board foundation most of my layout is all uh, what do you call it hollow core tabletops so I have to build my scenery up if I ever want to do any kind of like texturing or hills or stuff like that. So we're going to do it right. We're going to put the foam board first so we can build down if we need to. Now, while that's drying, I go ahead and grab a Sharpie, right? And just, uh, I, I loosely trace, I'm not trying to go for anything. I don't use pictures or whatever. I'm just kind of coming up with this, you know, in the back of my head here I'm like I want a cliff region I was going to go with like a type of gorge but that'd be kind of hard to film so if it's a cliff you know you, you can kind of get an easier picture here and I'm like uh, it's kind of flat right here so hills question mark you know you just I just play around with the idea and I, I, I cut out pieces and I slightly go smaller and smaller for each piece that way there's a sort of a slant for the cliff as it goes up in elevation Now, I broke some pieces off because I didn't want it to be like a wall. I wanted a little more depth as the, the cliff rised. And of course, we're using our hot wire knife. I didn't put this in material thing because you can, you know, you can cut the foam however you want to. Now, instead of fast forwarding everything, I decided to do these like quick little cuts to just show you everything I'm doing because, you know, this stuff takes a while. The, the foam cutting, the foam work, you know, the shaping. That's a lot of work and a lot of time. So we're just going to, you know, boom, 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 boom. We're just going to push right through it. Now, as you can see there too, like I, it's not fully dry, but if it's fully dry, uh, I want to be able to cut through some of the glue as, as easy, right? Like it's not as easy if it's like dry, dry, even though that foam board glue adhesive stuff is cuttable. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier right here instead of having to build the hills up right I can make that centerpiece where it says hills question mark the top of the hill and use scrap pieces that I cut off to basically give the hill texture that way it's kind of got the, the sweeping the sloping sides and this is the overall profile of everything I got going I'm not going for like super ultra smooth you know you don't don't take your carving with the foam knife to like the extreme, right? You don't need to because that's what the plaster's for. Now, before we do the plaster though, I like to put my ground texture everywhere. That way it has time to dry and I can touch up anything I miss. So it's just a 50-50 glue mixture of the school glue and water. It needs to be watered down because if it's, if it's not, it's a little too hard to like get it to shape and you end up ripping the toilet paper. So that's why I add the water. 
Now the consistency I'm going for is like dripping. So right here, I dip the sticks in there and just drip, drip. That's perfect to be able to paint on with a brush. And I do big sections. It doesn't dry too quick. Um, I help it dry by putting a fan next to it or whatever, but I paint big O sections and then put toilet paper and I use the glue to paint on top of it too. That way it's saturated on both sides. And then I put in my texture as I need it. Okay, now it's time to plaster. So I already have the plaster here pre-measured. I like my plaster a little thicker because I don't want to have to uh, wait as long for it to like start getting uh, thicker, kind of like cake batter uh, or frosting. I'm thinking like the frosting, right? So I work in small sections because I'm, I have a tendency to make too much. I put it on there, you're, you're frosting a cake, a pink velvet chocolate cake. I don't know what kind of flavor this is. What, what flavor is pink? I don't know, but we're frosting it. Make it look like a, you know, like a, like I made a wedding cake. I'm, I've never made a wedding cake before, but I go ahead and put some texture in while it's um, starting to set. And then I go to the carving tools and then we just jump right into it. I make horizontal lines following the texture that I put in while I was applying the plaster. And then with carving, I get rid of that, uh, the frosting look, basically anything that sticks out or looks too rough because I'm going for a somewhat smoother kind of rock face right so this this tool is perfect it's got a round edge and it's flat and it's beveled so it just slides against the plaster perfectly now that the plaster is all done i go ahead and my camera messed up i had the whole thing painting i did all the painting and everything on there but i just you know put brown paint put the scenery material on there boom boom, boom. and i had to use this footage from the previous video because the camera just I, I think we're going to make a video one of these times where we just run over the old camera, but it's just a gray and black kind of wash with some brown paint dry brushing. Now for the scenery, I use Mod Podge or Elmer's glue, uh, either one. I was using the Mod Podge at first and then I still had some Elmer's glue left over. So I decided to use that and I just dip the little bushes into the Elmer's glue and put them on where I feel like there needs to be hand placed big bushes somewhere along the edges mainly is what I'm going for. And I also put them along uh, where little, basically little steps are in the cliff side. Now for the random scenery, I, I spray the whole thing with like a, a spray bowl adhesive. It's like a Mod Podge adhesive. And I just sprinkle it all everywhere to get it random, push it where I want to. And when I'm applying the rocks, the little gravel here, I make sure I put a ton of adhesive, because otherwise it'll fall off. And then after I put all that there, I just spray it back on top. Now the trees are pretty straightforward. They're made from popsicle sticks. If you've watched that video, I just flip the popsicle stick over and just stab a hole and it fits perfectly. And this is the finished product. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch. And if you've enjoyed the content, feel free to subscribe. And don't forget to check that uh, notification icon so you're notified when I put out new videos. And I'll see you next time.